Welcome back, everyone. If you want to join the discussion, hit us up on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty. We're going to continue with our rookie mock it up before you fuck it up. Right now, we got pick 111. I'm being told the commissioner is. He's queued up and ready to go. And actually, it's your turn. This is my pick. It's your pick. I'm picking the. the I'm picking for you because I traded this pick 111 to you I got last year. Two first rounders. Count them one, two. But I got my boy Mike Williams. You so did. I'm still pumped about that. We'll talk about Mike. So what am I going to do here at 111? Looking I don't know. at your team. Let's see. Who did I already take for you? It's a carry on. You took carry on. We so can... pump that up. I think right here I just got to go best player available. Or whoever you think the best player available. Because it's basically just receivers left at this point. So right. you go in Christian Kirk. You go in Anthony Miller. Gallup. Go in Sutton. Sutton. All up in your grill. Got to go Sutton 6'3", 218, which if you look at Roto World, it says he's 6'1". They're messing stuff up all the time. It's fake news. Especially when they give us their opinion. Just give me the facts. And they can't even get that right all the time. Anyway. <laughs> hey, Roto World, is that's my go-to. Hey, I, I'm on it every I damn day. I like it day. for news and yeah. information, but I'm, Jay Wade's I'm saying, let's, let's lay off the opinions. I'm not going to yeah. Roto World one bit. You oh, one time, on him. I was out. Proofread your post. There's spelling errors all the time in that shit. Come I, on. I went out on this fishing trip with my dad. And the, and the tour guide, he was talking about how much he loved fantasy football. And, you know, obviously I'm into that conversation with him. I didn't have the heart to tell him. After we got off the boat, my dad goes, so is that guy any good at fantasy? Because my dad knows I'm a beast. He goes, is that guy, <laughs> is that guy any, is it, was he any good at fantasy Your football? Your dad always knows you're a beast. Right, right. So, <laughs> That's where that false sense of confidence comes from. Yeah, but it's not false. So anyway, <laughs> he goes, so is that guy, uh, y'all are talking fantasy football, is that guy any good at fantasy football? I was like, no. He goes, how'd you know? I was like, because he didn't know what Roto World was. He doesn't even know what Roto I mean, literally, he was like, well, what's Roto World? And I was like, oh. Uh, so how let's about get that? back to fishing. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> how about that bait over there? Yeah, <laughs> there's no Why don't reason. You tell me a little about about this reel. Well, once we got once got we got to that part, mouth he was like, "Where do you get your player news from?" And I was like, "Roto World." And he was like, "What's Roto World?" And I was like, "Okay, we're gonna talk some fishing because I'm not gonna talk to you about Spot fantasy football. Bass. I have nothing else to say to you about fantasy football. You don't know what Roto World is. <laughs> Can't do it. So Can't win with them. Cortland Sutton in one eleven. I couldn't tell you what the Roto World of Fishing is, so I'm, I'm not, I <laughs> couldn't true. really carry it's on the conversation. Masters, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so what is the reason that you are crowning Sutton? As well, I think for pretty BPA, much, pretty much the reason you alluded to in our last segment about Calvin Ridley. I he he's a guy who can this guy he could he could be a number one wide receiver. Sure. The, the the size and the frame and the red zone ability and, and the possession ness type. You and ability. I are both falling victim to chasing the six three two twenty guy right now, which sure. is fine. But I like I what like it. Sutton has in his package. Absolutely, not if in Cortland his actual Sutton, package. If Cor- but right, if Cortland Sutton comes out last no, year in a dynasty rookie draft, he's one 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 two one three. Yeah, it was pretty hot and heavy. Um, and this I, is accurate. The, 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 dynasty, the dynasty community was brokenhearted when he decided to go back to school. This is true. I think I started watching tape on him last year before he d- did not declare, and then he declared, and I was like, wait, what did I, I just wasted all this time for nothing? <laughs> this year he did declare. Yep. And, and, I, and I went back and watched all the stuff on him this year, and, and, and you can go back and listen to all our breakdowns and hear what we, we thought about him, and, and he's, he's definitely that red zone threat. As I mentioned, he's, he's – the hands you could you could question him at times. The, the, that offense wasn't very intricate. He didn't run a lot of routes. Basically, went down the field, just go up jumped and catch up it. over people and called it. Right. He did. He did the Des Bryant. But then right. he comes to the combine and puts up a ridiculous three cone drill. Runs a four five four. Gives you some solid metrics for your pleasure. Um, comes into a, a pretty solid spot here. I feel like um, I, I think that this guy could end up being one of the best wide receiver in this class. It's, it's kind of splitting hairs for me for, for who I like the most. I think I got to go with DJ Moore ceiling that'll make him my number one wide receiver. But then I, I Ridley and Sutton are right there, both two and three for me. I think I'd probably put Sutton a hair above Ridley just because of that number oneness that I, for whatever reason, feel like he could become. Um, the, the Broncos are obviously bringing back Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders for this year, and I like both those guys, but they're both over 30 years old. Manny's 31. They're both on contract through 2019, but they'd have to pay him 10 and $14 million respectively in 19, so I don't see him keeping both of those guys after this upcoming season. 
I think it's going to be an awesome year for Cortland in terms of learning from these two pros on how to be a pro and how to run routes and develop as a player. I think he'll get his chances in the red zone this year, and I think targets. I think he's going to have the easiest job out there as the number three wide receiver on this team. Yeah, and I love this pick for the Broncos. Yeah, I do too. It's, it's a great pick, um, and he because he's a versatile guy. He can play well from the slot. He can do work over the middle of the field. Um, I, I read the Roto World blurb that said he was good after the catch, and I was like, nobody was giving this credit, this guy no. credit for being good after the catch except for us. No, and that's the that's the first thing that stood out to me, and that's the reason why I do like him so much because he does have that frame, he does have the six three kind of two twenty pedigree that you're looking for, and you know you can question a little bit of the jump ball stuff from him from time to time but that, that's a the quarterback I, play was pretty the erratic. quarterback play was pretty erratic and i feel like when you have that frame that's a teachable asset sure the, the box out jump up kind of deal and you get a better system and a better quarterback that can all be improved but what you what what is i believe a harder thing to attain especially for a guy of his stature is he has i think a little bit of julio jones in him on that crossing route and his run after the catch ability I think he's kind of hard to wrangle after you get him in my opinion some people don't agree with me but that's what I saw on tape and that's what made me put him up in the upper echelon of with DJ Moore as being a tear break between the one and two and then a tear break between the rest mm. of the guys is I think that he has the frame and the size and the agility. speed and the agility that you want from this guy so he can catch you the fade he can jump over but he also can run you that crossing route or run you that that big dig and and get you some run after the catch ability i i mean as far as the fade route or the contested catches or the jump up and get it i mean there might have been a player or two that you could have said hey he could have done this better but oh, there well, he claps for, the ball. well the, for the every, hands for, the, the for actual every, catching ability for every one or it. two for every one or two catches that he could have made look a little easier there were six or seven catches where it's like nobody else in college is making that play right i mean he he he's a grown man receiver out there already like yeah. there's there's what, what you know you caution yourself on is this you know and it's not all laquan treadwell's fault but is this going to be a laquan treadwell like fall off the radar kind of player or is this going to be oh my god he's a top 20 startup pick next year kind yeah. of player and obviously with the competition there with like jay wayne was talking about it's probably not going to be that next year <laughs> But I agree with that. I'll take a year with two great teachers, with Emmanuel right. Sanders and Demarius Thomas. Not not too many. Pl- you can't get better than that. Well, one, and with their salary situation, there's no way both stay. After no this way. Year. And they're, they might not even make it through this offseason. It's possible that one of them's not there through this offseason. I think not, they've already paid them for this year. So. It's, it's possible that they get tra- one of them could get traded or and or something else. But even if you go to the, go to the week one as it sits with him being the third wide receiver there. Sometimes you just take a guy and it's like, all right, well, maybe he doesn't pay off this year, but I got a, a longer term asset. play. Exactly. Court because Clint of where he and went and because of the non because of the short sightedness of a lot of dynasty owners for whatever reason, because we're playing dynasty and it doesn't make any sense. Right. You're able to get this guy, I think, a little later when where, where you agree. should. And this is a little bit more of a slightly long play. And it could be a guy who I had him as my number one receiver because when the ball is on him and he can actually run after the catch, it was one of my favorite things to watch and he he was awesome he just didn't get that opportunity a ton of times and he got became disappointed with some throws and some erraticness and sometimes where the team was going and where the ball was placed and all that stuff and yes you shouldn't get that upset but it's it's human nature it's tough not to yeah and what we talked about with calvin ridley and touched on i was and i we got into the conversation about the big wide receivers versus a smaller wide receiver and i mentioned sigmund bloom's podcast like he is the one quote unquote big wide receiver that didn't fall in this draft. Basically the NFL pushed all the other big wide receivers back. They got tired of chasing it. Mm -hmm. They got tired of saying, Hey, we're going to take a stab on potential because potential gets you fired. And Cortland Sutton did not get pushed down that list. He's one of the guys that stayed up at the top. And like it, Jay Wayne mentioned, the agility numbers at the combine were ridiculous for a guy his size. Yeah. And you put all those together. And I didn't always see that three cone drill on tape, but sometimes. No, and you sometimes do. you see it backwards and forwards. Sometimes you don't see You see it on tape, and you goes, and, and then you see Ridley going on tape juking defenses out of their shoes being wide open and Jalen Hurts throwing it 20 yards out of bounds and then he goes to the combine and maybe he ain't he doesn't have the best numbers that everybody wants him to have yeah. and then you got some people that don't look that big and strong you know that fast or that agile for their size on tape and then they go to the combine and you're like well where did that come from kind of like Jay well, like we were talking about with the Gasecki the tight end like how do, he doesn't look that Cal- agile on tape Calvin but, Ridley's broad jump looked terrible on tape 
Yeah, when, you he was, can't, when he was coming off the line of scrimmage, right? He just looked terrible, horrible, Rod. horrible. <laughs> you can't, you can't take that. You can't take those numbers. You can't take that three cone away from him, though. Him, it's true. You it's know, very true. You can't take it away from him. Either. What and for for Cortland or Ridley, either you know. So some guys don't test well. Some guys test extremely well. You have to rely on what you saw, what you saw in your eyes, and and your trust of of what you know and how you know. And or and, you could rely on our eyes and what we yeah. saw. You well, I, I, like. I like I like this I like Casey saying that he had Sutton as his number one receiver. I like Sutton's a potential that I, right. he, that potential could get you fired, but I like that potential a ton. And you know, if it works out for the Broncos quarterback, why if Case Keenum is a quarterback, and we mentioned and, that, and we let Chad Kelly's name come up and slide right away, like there's a there's a, some rumblings about how Ch- how good Chad Kelly is. Cult about, following. There, there's some rumblings about how, how much, good he yeah. Chad about Kelly's to be. not the brightest crayon in the toolbox they, well the thing about it is his off the field iq and his on the field iq are two different iqs yeah. this and is just South football similar to james winston exactly yeah. and so when chad kelly's in between the stripes my man's good and they said he just cleaned it up after a year in the league they say he just got his body right and he's about to be good he could and be maybe the reason why they didn't go reaching around too they too might much. they might know what they got so between one of those two quarterbacks if one of those two guys can come in and stabilize this quarterback position and not that a rookie couldn't do it next year but then you start all over again what i mean is if the quarterback situation can just stabilize then sort Sutton's upside could be realized earlier than having to go through. If 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 Case Keenum goes back yeah. to being the Case Keenum that he was on the Rams, which that was Jeff Fix, Fisher boat anchoring him there. But if he if he goes back to being a Case Keenum and not last yeah. year's Case Keenum, then this whole rigmarole of the quarterback situation starts over for the Broncos. Well, and, and I think the Broncos have been doing a good job of of br- kind of bringing in the next kind of guard and, and bringing him back here. Like they just drafted Sutton. They brought in Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Hamilton, who I, I really like, who could end up being the slot receiver after the other receivers part uh, with Demarius sure. Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. They have Carlos Henderson from a year ago. Yeah. Uh, they have Jake Butt over there. They had, they just brought in Royce Freeman. They have Devonte Booker. They've got a decent offensive line in place. Like they've, they've done a good job of having some guys in the wings here so that maybe when it's time to turn over, it's not that bad. And they've been learning from guys that Couldn't, are in front yeah, of them. This was a beautiful move by the Broncos. Couldn't because agree if more this guy with that. reaches and blossoms into, into his, any of his potential, it allows them to move on from these high paid dudes. And, it, and that with the, with the uh, Sutton point, but all those players that Casey just rattled off it, I could, obviously, they could materialize into nothing, and they could be terrible. But, but like you said, they they set themselves up. They obviously have some good wide receivers with the veterans that they have. And so, if Case Keenum comes in there and he's a good wide quarterback this year, they're a playoff team. Man, Case if, Keenum needs some respect. Man. I'm just saying, listen, it's a tough division, listen, so maybe no, not. Well, but, true, but you, but they're they're competitive. Maybe if Mahomes Case, if Case Keenum's advertise. is good, they're they could be a playoff team for sure. But they also set themselves up with now and future quality p- position players. And so if they have to chase a guy in free agency next year, they, uh, you know, quote unquote, got some guys to bring him in. Hey, look at, we got, we got, we got talent. We got players, you know, you're not just coming. We're not trying to lure you over here well, to like the bills are, they got with, you sure. know, the, they're the opposite of the bills. They're set up and they're staggered and they got age guys. They got veterans. They got quality youngsters. And, they, and they, to that point, they got like the future. it gives them the ability to have that option to go chase the free agents. Because like Jay Wayne said, it, you can get you out of these higher paid contracts and you have these guys kind of waiting back here. Yeah. And this is how you see a lot of blueprints for Super Bowls kind of. Yeah percolate because there's a bunch of guys and then you can go acquire some free agents that can help bring your locker room together and turn your team around and all of a sudden you're not paying some of these guys too too much money and it unlocks the ability to right bring upgrade the other positions around you solid pick by the broncos solid pick for your dynasty team at 111 uh listen listen to these numbers by case keenum right here right are you (laughs) he was 17th in attempts last year which isn't you know what it is, what it is. Pack. 12th in completions, which that's good for second in completion percentage. Uh, right? Uh, so people up. care uh, about. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Tied for 12th in touchdowns and 12th in total yards. Like, those are way better. Those are like solidly better than average stats. Sure. Broncos just got significantly better, and everybody around them with the bringing in of, of Keenum. Case Keenum. Well, yeah. Just man, some respect. I mean, that's what I said. The Vikings' position players did too good for Keenum not to have done well. Keenum was in some play. 
Case Keenum pulled start, spot starts for our my fantasy team last year. Case Keenum sure. was cool under pressure, man. That dude does not care when that pocket collapses. That's, he that's what I was off. saying earlier. I think that's an underrated part of his game. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. cool under pressure, and he's got weapons around him right now, and they have people behind those guys to kind of build this franchise up. He's been hating on for so long, he's got nothing to lose. He goes out there and lets it rip. But good for him last year. Good for him finally getting paid. Let's go ahead and move the F on. <laughs>